in. Now I wanted to start this week's video just by saying a massive, massive thank you to everyone who watched and left a comment on my last video which was a huge announcement video. I was overwhelmed by all your lovely comments so thank you so so much. If you haven't seen that video and you have no idea what I'm talking about I will put a link in the description below if you want to go check that out. So back to this week's video. For this week's video I thought it would be really fun to show you how I created this scalloped shaped cake. Okay, let's get started. Okay, now to make that scallop shape around the side of my cake, I'm actually gonna be using some acrylic discs. Now, these are the Flawless Finish Carve and Frost Plates by Sweet Stamp. In the pack are actually two plates, one for the top and one for the bottom. Now, you may have seen a video on my channel where I use round acrylic discs to give me a super smooth finish on my cakes. This is the same technique, but these actually have a shaped edge. And these are the six inch flawless finish plates. Now, if we take a closer look at the size, if we measure from the shortest point, they're actually around six and a half inches. Where we've got those scalloped edges, if I measure across from them, it's actually seven and a half inches. So if you were to stack your cake, you wanna take this into consideration that your cake is actually gonna end up seven and a half inches across. Now, I'm gonna be decorating some six inch sponge cakes. So there is gonna be quite a lot of space around the edge filled with buttercream. So if you're not much of a fan of buttercream, you can also use a chocolate ganache. If you did want a little bit less buttercream, instead of using a six inch cake, what you could actually use is a seven inch cake and just cut it down slightly so you've got a little bit less space and it fits within those plates. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually prepare my cake so that we can start using the plates. And I will put a link in the description below to the recipe I've used. So I'm just cutting off the top, just leveling that off and dividing each of my cakes into two. This is gonna give me a four layer cake. Now, I have had my cake in the fridge just to chill slightly to make it a little bit easier to level and to cut. But once it returns back to room temperature, it will go back to being nice and soft and fluffy. I've then mixed up a batch of vanilla buttercream and again I'll put the recipe in the description below and I've just coloured this in a pretty pink colour using the Colour Splash Raspberry colour. So to start I'm just going to be filling between my layers adding in some of that buttercream and I'm going to add a crumb coat around the outside. Now all a crumb coat does is just lock in any loose crumbs on the outside of your cake to stop them getting into that final layer of buttercream. So I'm just going in first with my offset spatula just starting to smooth out that buttercream before going in with my smoothing tool. Once that's smooth around the edge I'm just going to take my offset spatula again and and just pull in from the edge. I'm then gonna place my cake in the fridge just for that buttercream to firm up slightly. Okay, so whilst my cake is in the fridge, I'm gonna prepare the cake plates. So to do this, I'm gonna take some non-stick parchment paper and draw around that plate. Now you can place the plates directly onto the cake. But I find by adding a small amount of parchment paper to the top and the bottom, it just makes it easier to release that cake once we're done and stop those plates sticking to that buttercream. So I'm actually going to cut out those shapes but make them around half a centimetre smaller so just coming in from the edge and this will just give me a little bit of wiggle room and I'm trying to line up those plates. I'm then going to use a small amount of buttercream just as a glue to hold that parchment paper in place. Whilst our cake has been in the fridge and that buttercream has just been sitting, this is when air bubbles can start to appear. So I wanna get these out before I add it onto my cake. So all I'm gonna do is use my spatula and just push that buttercream around the edge of my bowl, just smoothing it onto the sides, just pushing out any air bubbles. And this is gonna make it a lot easier to smooth on the side of our cake. And as you can see, in no time at all, it's becoming a lot smoother. Okay, so I've got my turntable and just a glass kitchen board on top with a piece of non-slip mat underneath. Now I've got another piece of non-slip mat which I'm gonna place on the top. One thing that you will want to do is make sure that the plates actually line up. And after doing a little bit of testing, you wanna make sure that the logo 
on the top is facing forward on the top and the bottom. This way they're going to line up perfectly. If they're slightly off, the design isn't completely symmetrical, so your cake could end up looking a little bit wonky. So I'm going to place the first one down just by flipping it over so I know that the scallop at the front of my board will need to line up with the scallop on the front of the plate on the top. I'm then going to take my chilled cake out of the fridge and place this in the centre. The first thing to do is to work on the top. So I'm going to take some of my buttercream and I want to get this as smooth as I can. And I'm also going to allow some of that buttercream just to fall over the edge. You also want to use this opportunity to make sure that your cake is nice and level on the top. Once you're happy with that, I'm going to flip over my top plate so that parchment paper is facing down. You then want to go in with your metal smoothing tool and we're going to use this to help line up those plates. So you want to keep the bottom of your scraper on your board and when you push it up against those plates, you want to make sure that it's connecting with both that bottom and the top edge. Once you're happy with the position, we're going to start filling this gap with our buttercream. Now, in order to get a nice top on the top of my cake, I'm gonna start by pushing that buttercream up towards that top plate. So I'm holding it with my hand just so I know that it isn't gonna move. And using that offset spatula, I'm just pushing that buttercream up. And this is gonna fill that gap at the top. So I'm gonna work my way all the way around. And again, as I mentioned, there are a few different ways for you to trim or cut your cake if you didn't wanna add as much buttercream. Once I've gone all the way around the top, I'm going to do exactly the same to the bottom. I can then use the rest of my buttercream to fill this gap in the middle. You will need the buttercream to come out slightly further than the plates so that we've got enough to smooth round. Now, don't worry, I know currently this is looking a little bit of a mess, but it will start to take shape once we bring that smoothing tool round. So I'm going to start by going round, just taking off the excess, just to see where I need to add more buttercream. So at this point, we're not trying to smooth out the cake. I can then start to work my way around, just starting to smooth it out and again filling in any air bubbles or any gaps that I have. And it's super hard to get this smooth the first time, so you will need to keep running that smooth into a round a few times. Now, this is a product that Sweet Stamp have recently released and as soon as I saw them, I just knew I had to try them and share them with you on the channel. Now, if you too are loving the shape that these plates are creating, then I do have a 10% off discount code for these plates and also for everything across the Sweet Stamp website. All you have to do is enter my code CAKESBYLINS at the checkout and I will put all the details for this discount in the description below. Now, in case anybody is wondering about the amount of buttercream that I used, I used a six inch sponge cake and these are the six inch flawless finish plates plates and to fill Cromco and cover this cake I actually use the equivalent of 600 grams of butter and 1.2 kilograms of icing sugar I then added the correct amount of vanilla and milk and I will put the recipe in the description below now it can be a little tricky if you're used to smoothing round cakes but my tip would be just to take it slowly and just to work on each of those scallops at a time. So as you can see I'm going one way and then I'm actually bringing the scraper back the other way and I found for me this was the best way to smooth it out. So once you're happy that that's as smooth as you're going to get it, I'm going to take my scraper and just take off any excess buttercream from the top of that plate. I'm then going to pop my cake back in the fridge just for that buttercream to firm up slightly so that I can remove the plates and transfer it onto my board. 
Okay, so my cake has been left for around half an hour in the fridge and that buttercream has firmed up. So the next thing to do is take off the plate at the top and the bottom. Now to do this, you could use a variety of tools. You want something that you're able to get underneath that plate and just pull round. So either a small spatula, or I'm actually going to be using my craft knife just because it's got quite a sharp edge. You want something that is super thin as I found that if it's too large and you're trying to drag it round, it can kind of rip into your buttercream and just pull it away. Another tip that you can do is take some boiling water and one of your spatulas and just heat it up in the boiling water before dragging it round and this can really help. You just want to make sure that you take off any excess water before adding it to the cake. Now I'm going to start at the bottom just because I find this the most difficult to get off so I'm going to get this one out of the way first. So I'm just sliding that craft knife between the plate and the cake and I'm just pulling it round. Now because we have that piece of parchment paper I only need to go in as much as that parchment paper as that bit shouldn't have actually stuck. I've then got a 10 inch masonite board and I'm going to use an offset spatula on one side and a normal spatula on the other side. Now as you can see just to get my fingers underneath that bit of parchment paper I've just moved the cake to the side of my cake board just so I can get my finger underneath and just pull that out. I can then transfer that cake onto my board and I'm just going to go in with a really small spatula at the bottom and just mend any areas which might have caught as I transferred it over. I then want to do exactly the same on the top. So as soon as you see the knife or the spatula start to drag that buttercream, you just want to warm it back up slightly and it will just glide around. And you want to make sure you go all the way around the top before you start to lift it as you don't want any of that buttercream to come away. And I can take off that parchment paper and then using some of that excess buttercream that I've still got left, I'm gonna go in and just fill up any gaps that need it. And once you're happy with that top, there we have this really pretty scalloped shaped cake. So you could either leave it like this, maybe use it as part of a tiered cake, or you can add a decoration to finish it off. I really love these shaped cakes as they just make such a different alternative to your standard round cake. Now this is the scallop shaped plate but Sweet Snap do have a different range of different sizes and different shapes. Also don't forget that if you did want to get your hands on one of these plates I will put a 10% off discount code in the description below the video but all you have to do is enter Cakes by Linz at the checkout on their website. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and will find it useful. If you have enjoyed the video as always don't forget to give it a like and if you'd like to see more videos like this and you haven't already then don't forget get subscribed to the Case by Lynn's YouTube channel. Now I will put links to all the tools that I've used throughout today's video in the description below so you can find those there. So until next time, bye!